Hi everybody, this is Carissa Humbutton here of 7th Street Gifts, brick and mortar apothecary shop in Newport, Kentucky, established 1999. I'd like to say a big thank you to the Lawrenceburg Public Library and the Friends of the Library for sponsoring our Year of the Flowers, our DIY Make It and Take It kits, and certainly you for expressing interest in checking your kits out and going home and making your herbal botanical apothecary this year with us. So our 11th flower of the year, it's hard to believe, 11 out of 12, we're in the home stretch here, is yarrow or yarrow, however you would want to say it. I don't I think there's really um, any reason to be worried about pronunciation here. And this is a very common naturalized wild flower that we find throughout our entire area in meadows and woodlands. And it's also become a popular cultivar where you can buy in nurseries now and incorporate into your landscaping and garden as a naturalizer. And it's also a natural pest deterrent too. So it confuses and deters the pests in our gardens and our flower beds that we don't want. And it attracts and encourages the bugs that are uh, pest eaters like ladybugs and lacewings and things like that that um, help our garden. So it's a nice thing to work in if you do want to like um, inst install it in landscaping or borders because it's beneficial for a lot of reasons. Also as it decomposes and breaks down in the fall around this time of year, it's a really rich fertilizer for the soil. The leaves and the components in the, in the botanical matter are really nutrient rich. So it's just all around a really good plant to have. Um, it's oftentimes confused as a wild carrot or as being in the carrot family or Queen's Anne's lace family um, because the leaves and the buds before they open up can be similar, especially because they grow wildly in a lot of the same places like open fields and meadows or the borders of woods and creeks and things of that nature. But it is not. It is not the carrot family, and we want to be 110% when we're IDing it that we have the correct plant and botanical because as we know, some of the um, hemlocks and Queen's Anne's lace can be potentially toxic and poison. So we want to be 110% with identification with this that we do in fact have the yarrow species that is related to the daisy and sunflower, or not related in the daisy and sunflower family, the Aster Aceae family. So same as the coneflower or the echinacea flower last week, or last month. Um, so, this plant can be internalized, and it's similar to the echinacea and cone flower in the Asteraceae AC family that we discussed and tinctured last time, in the sense that the root to the, to the flower, to the stem, to the leaf can all be internalized and eaten or used externally for medicinal medicine without any concern um, or worry that you would um, not get a safe medicine or a safe botanical. However, it has a very, very bitter taste, and it is considered a bitter. We could do a whole class or series just on bitters, which are certain herbal flavors and constituents and properties that stimulate bile and appetite and um, digestion production. But um, that would be its own class, so I'm not going to trail off and try to go into the bitter. But a bitter taste also has a bitter um, influence or action. However, the bitter taste, and it's very bitter, and I consume a lot of funky bitter stuff, so if I'm saying it's bitter, then I think it's a legitimate, um, I guess, noteworthy commentary. It makes it difficult to consume. Like, it'd be really difficult to drink a cup of yarrow tea. Not that it wouldn't affect you positively as a medicine and make you feel better and be effective in that sense, but it's just a really bitter, hard to consume, not palatable flavor or taste. Um, just that being said, if you do want to use it internally for some of the strong medicinal properties it has, because it's a pretty potent, uh, user-friendly, safe herb to use for a lot of common everyday ailments, I find that it tinctures really well. And that's what we did with our echinacea and coneflower. You would tincture it exactly the same way as we did the echinacea and coneflower. The same ratio that I prefer, which is an ounce of dry botanical to eight ounce of ingestible, uh, at least 40 proof pure grain alcohol. And then you can take the drops freely up into teaspoon or tablespoon or dropper doses. And you could refer back to last month's uh, cone flower to see the tincturing explanation and more detail about it. And you could apply the exact same recipe uses and, and um, therapy to the RO tincture. Um, 
One thing that it is really good for that it may want you to consider tincturing or working into other herbal or botanical blends on your own is it's excellent for a heavy menses. So if you're somebody who experiences a heavy period every month, uh, the Yaro is a really simple, easy, and effective, safe way to give you a little bit of relief from that. So I don't want to talk about Yaro and not mention that because it's really effective and safe and has a, a big, big pack for its punch as far as a medicine that kind of relieves that condition. Um, however, today what I'm going to suggest and talk to everybody about is how to apply it and use it externally. But I do want everybody to know that this is a medicine you can safely internalize. Just the bitter uh, flavor makes it very difficult to um, bring into your palate. So externally, examples or suggestions of external use for yarrow would be a compress, a soak, a liniment, or an oil, an oil infusion. And then too, to build on our year of flowers, you could go back and watch our calendula or calendula technique that we did this summer, where we infused the dry flower petals into an olive oil um, and used it. Actually, I have about this much of mine left. I don't know if anybody else did it, but I've been using it ever since we made it. And I'm almost out. But you can apply the same technique of oil infusion that we did for the calendula. You could go back and re-watch that YouTube video or watch it again for the first time and apply the same recipe and methods um, to the madness that, we would, that you would use for yarrow. So there are two other things that you can go back and re-watch or watch again for the first time to apply the yarrow to, and that would be the echinacea or coneflower tincture that we did and or the calendula oil infusion external application um, skin oil that we did. So today I'm going to turn the board and we're going to talk about how to make a liniment and then other ways that you would use it as a compress or soak. Alrighty. Oh, and then something that I forgot to mention, and I think it was in the description that Denise put in the newsletter, but its botanical name, the Achille, uh, Achilles Achillea millifolium, is a really cool uh, botanical name, and it's based off of Achilles, the Greek or Roman god, who was the lawyer, and he used in a lot of the writings and the legend and the lore of Greek and Roman mythology. Yarrow is a healer for battle wounds and, and things that happened in um, Greek and Roman mythology, big fights and, and um, bloody battles and things of that nature. They would use yarrow as their healing flower, and that's where it derived its botanical name Achillea after Achilles. And then millifolium just means many, 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 or millions or hundreds of little leaves. <clears throat> and when you're um, out walking, you'll see it actually has one leaf wrapped off of the main stem, but it's very ferny and fanny-like, and it does look like, give the impression of many, many, many little teeny tiny leaves. So that's kind of a cool, interesting, noteworthy fact about yarrow and its uh, Latin origin botanical name. So what we're going to do today is make a liniment. And a liniment is an alcohol-based infused with medicinal botanicals. And today our liniment is going to be infused with the medicinal, medicinal botanical of yarrow to be used externally. So that means you would apply it on the outside of your body, you would not take it in, you would not internalize it. Witch hazel is also a nice substitute if you're going to use this liniment um, or application in the Netherlands or on the face or on super sensitive, already really fragile kind of temperamental skin to begin with. And how I like to use the liniments is add a half ounce to alcohol. So a half ounce, we have an ounce in our bag, so we're going to use half of it. And we're going to infuse it using our muslin bag that's inside. I'm going to show you how to do it in just a second. It's so easy. And what's really nice about that is once you do it, you can kind of put it back in your medicine cabinet and walk away from it. And it's an indefinite shelf life. So it lasts a really, really long time indefinitely. If anything, you would kind of get evaporation um, and just it gets stronger and stronger the longer it steeps too. So I don't really find a need to pull out the botanical, especially in a base like this strong, a 91% um, rubbing alcohol, because it'll just increase the medicinal potency 
And if anything, as you start to go back and use it and it's increased in strength and potency, you would just use less of it, right? Because it'd be a stronger, more concentrated version. And then I like to use the bottle that it comes in. And I'll show you how we're going to do it in a minute. And then I just add squirts of it after it's been infused or turned into a liniment um, to water. Um, so like, let's say you want to do a foot soak or a bath with um, a bunch of scratches in the woods or like poison ivy that's been popped open or bug bites. You can just add a few squirts to your warm bath water and use it that way. Or if it's not like a big open oozing wound or something that would really be painful to apply, you can squirt a little directly on a cotton ball and just apply it externally as a styptic and a cleanser. And so a styptic is one of Yarrow's most important features in my humble opinion, and that's that it stops bleeding. And it stops bleeding like yesterday. That's also why it's a good thing to internalize for heavy bleeding too, but the same applications work externally too. So in just a second, I'm gonna do this example, but real quickly, I wanna talk about the other ways you could use it. So you could also use the yarrow in your kit today because you'll have a half ounce left if you apply the same technique that I'm gonna do. And that would be where you would keep the herb in the bag and you, or wrap it in a, a cheesecloth or a clean um, rag or you know something like that. And then you would get it warm with warm water and let it cool off to about room temperature and then apply and compress directly to the wound or the, the um, worrisome spot. So this is especially good with like animal bites, like a dog bite or a really bad cat scratch or bunnies. When you get bunnies, sometimes they get nervous and they do that thing and they'll like scratch the insides of your arms up. It'll stop the bleeding. It acts as an astringent and it tightens everything up and then it also um, reduces inflammation and cleanses. It has a lot of antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. So it's a really good thing to have like in on the farm or just a pet house because little, you know, nips and things like scratches happen with animals. And a compress applied to an animal bite or scratch is really an effective way to at least treat it right then and there to kind of stop the bleeding, keep it clean, then examine it and decide, you know, what steps should be taken next. A soak is another really good way to use your yarrow. And again, you would probably just keep it in the tea bag, use about a tablespoon to a half ounce and make a very, very, very strong tea. And then you would use it as a rinse. So maybe let's say you have a diabetic in your house and you wanna like rinse their feet really well. Or you could make like a foot soak. Then when it was done, rinse it or soak it in the RO tea. Cause it's really good for like um, worrisome limbs and digits that you wanna keep super clean and healthy. And then again, we're going to do the liniment today, and that's an alcohol shelf-stable infusion that's meant to be applied externally. And then another thing I won't spend a lot of time on, and I know it's kind of an odd topic to bring up, but um, look up and, and learn more about stits. And that's like a perennium, um, the Netherlands, uh, south of the border, way to kind of clean your super sensitive areas, especially like after childbirth, postpartum if you're suffering from um, hemorrhoids, things of that nature. I know it's kind of a, a weird topic, but it's worth mentioning, and yarrow is super effective in a stitz and or a perennium um, as a cleanser or bath. And if you did something like that, you would use witch hazel, right, not alcohol. But it's super effective and as a postpartum herb um, externally for soaks and, and just recovering from birth, it's in my top two or three. So again, just to talk about it again, a styptic is just a fancy word for something that stops bleeding. And yarrow certainly is that, internally and externally. The other attributes it brings to the table is it reduces inflammation, it tightens, and it cleans. So you can see why this would make it an ideal liniment, um, an external application for wounds and bites and scratches and other sorts of um, issues that you would need a little bit of TLC for, right? So examples would be like a kitchen cut, doing vegetables. Paper cuts, they're the absolute worst, right? They hurt and they're little and they're nothing to be alarmed about, but then they bleed and then you're at your desk and you're getting blood spots on all your notes and stuff, it's gross. So it's really good, it'll stop a paper cut right away. Shaving cuts for man or woman. So uh, lots of times if, if you're man shaving or you're shaving your legs, you get those little razor nicks. The liniment applied externally is a great styptic. It stops those little shaving cuts right away. <clears throat> and then again, for sore and troubled feet. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a diabetic foot, but that's just an example. 
Um, you can apply the liniment right to it. It's like a clean rinse or wash and then like a lotion or a cream and socks or you can add squirts or the um, soak and infusion into like a foot soak or foot bath. Okay? So this is easy peasy lemon squeezy. You'll see too we got some really nice new brochures printed up for the holidays. Um, and those will be included and they list all the botanicals and things that we have and our stones and crystals. I like them for the kids because you kind of look at them and read them, but then I use them as just a teeny little placemat, like a nice clean work surface. Why not? The other thing about Yara that you're going to be sure you get the correct medicinal version, right? The, uh, the Achilles uh, millifolium, because the other botanical hybrid for landscaping aren't the same, so it's important to be sure you get the native species for medicine. You can smell it. It's a stringent antiseptic really potent but in a good way and it kind of lends uh, you by the scent and the strength of it that it would be a bitter kind of not palatable friendly uh, user friendly taste bud flavor because it just smells to me like medicine so this is just like how we talked about tincture hacks this is a liniment hack I'm just like you guys I have a million things to do and um, you know, a big list, so we're just going to do it simple and easy, what you could do one morning when you're getting ready for your day before you headed out and conquer door road without a whole bunch of fancy kitchen tools and gadgets and extra time. And so I like a 91% of rubbing alcohol, but if you have the 70 or 80% or whatever, that's absolutely fine. Um, since COVID, the 91% has been a little harder to find, so when I do see it, I just kind of grab it up and try to keep it around. But if you have a lower percent rubbing alcohol, that's absolutely okay. And then remember, if you're going to use this in more sensitive places or you just have a more sensitive skin, then I would substitute my base with witch hazel. But you can do the same application and technique. It would just be a milder, um, less burning sensation, astringent than a, a strong concentrated rubbing alcohol. We all know that. And so remember with folk medicine, especially safe herbs like this, and this is going to be taken externally, not taken into the body. You can be pretty relaxed with some um, quantities. You'll be able to eyeball your ounces just about up to there. This is a nice kind of fluffy, airy flower. These are all the yellow flower heads. So when it gets about down to there, you've hit about your half ounce. You'll see too, my alcohol bottle was halfway full. This was a 16 ounce bottle. So I brought it when it was half ounce, and then that would apply to a ratio of um, eight ounces, one ounce to eight ounces, or half ounce to um, eight ounces. It depends on how strong you want to make it. For a tincture to take internally, I would do one ounce to eight ounces. For externally, I feel like you can safely get away with a half ounce to eight ounces and save a half of your uh, botanicals for other uses. It's a good thing just to have on hand. And so you probably saw me do that. I just kind of tunneled in our nice cotton organic muslin drawstring bag that's right on top of the herb bag that Claire Sketch uh, so kindly packed up and prepared for you guys. And then I just put it into the um, opening. I unscrewed my lid. And then remember how we joked about it, but it's funny to think about and say, but it's true. The world's first mortar and pestle, right? The opposable thumb, pretty important, and the index finger. So I just kind of tap and pour them in, and then I bruise and crush with my mortar and pestle. And you'll be able to smell the aromatic compounds. It's a strong essential oil. It's very volatile, but not in a bad way, but it's potent, potent, potent. And then I just use my index finger and I push it down. And these bags are a lot more forgiving and um, flexible than you think. So you can, you do not have to treat them with kit gloves. You can kind of rough them up and use them how you see fit. Top that again, almost to the tippy top. Yeah, and I'm already probably about, let's see here, down to here. So I'm about a finger down. This might be a little bit closer to a quarter of an ounce than a half ounce. Then I'm going to push my bag down a little bit too. You can also just use like a chopstick or a clean kitchen straw or a thin knife or a stirring stick um, if you don't want to use your fingers or you're afraid they might get stuck or something. 
And then I wish you could see it, but it's really easy. It makes just a nice little funnel of sorts, honestly. And then you can just kind of manipulate your bag and do a little spout and do better than I did just now. Oh, I almost tipped it. And again, you just want to crush and bruise your medicinals. You could also, if you wanted to, just pour this in freely. A lot of folk medicine and herbalists are huge advocates for no bar barrier-free infusion. Um, and let it just freely mix and blend in, which is absolutely fine. I just um, don't always have time to strain it. And I also find when you're introducing this to just the average person, if it's got a bunch of botanical matter floating around in it and it, it just looks a little questionable, people are less likely to give it a try. And it just seems, uh, I guess, less legitimate. So a nice filtered strain base has a better aesthetic and a better aesthetic makes it more likely to be used, right? And not sit in the back of the counter because it's some weird thing that mom brewed up that nobody wants to fool with. And then just for the sake of time, too, I'm going to stop there. I could probably do this about two or three more times. And you'll be able to tell and feel as you get to it that your bag is filling up. You want to be sure you keep this part out so you can draw string it up and then push it all the way in when you're done. So I'm just going to draw string it now. We're going to pretend that I did that fill about three or four more times. And then I try not to knot it. I try to tie like a shoestring tie, like a shoelace trot, if you're going to tie your sneakers or gym shoes. So you can empty it out and um, untie it and then use your bag again and again, even if it's by the time your bottle's empty. You can still pull that baby out and let that yarrow um, dry up, flip it inside out and use it again. Even if you just keep it in the back of your little medicine kit for like a compress and you would have a bag you could put a handful in. You can also do a lot of stories about Native American and indigenous people um, and like, you know, of course, Greek and Roman mythology that we already spoke about would talk about finding yarrow in the woods or the fields and chewing it up with their own spit and making like a really primitive crude poultice and then spreading it over like snake bites or bad wounds or battle wounds or arrow pokes and things of that nature. So again, what's nice about this is an indefinite shelf life, and it can just sit in there and get potent and more stronger and more concentrated. And again, as it gets more concentrated and stronger, as you went to it, you would just use less of it, right? Because you would not need as much because it would be a more concentrated version. And even just a couple quick shakes, you can already see that the yarrow um, is infusing into our alcohol base. So we now have a liniment, okay? So that's what a liniment is, is an alcohol-based infused botanical to be applied externally. And it'll just get deeper and darker. It'll almost turn like a dark coffee brown, especially if you let it continue to infuse and get um, like just stronger. Um, so don't be alarmed by that. It's very normal. And then we probably have, gosh, a good half ounce, if not more, because remember I stopped this just a little bit early. Um, and you can use it all these other ways. So you can tincture it, you can infuse it into an oil, you can use it as a compress, a soak. We've already used it as a liniment. You can explore sticks more thoroughly on your own and um, know that it is very good infused in witch hazel to use in super sensitive areas. And today, my number one feature of Yarrow would be its stipped quality, so the ability to stop bleeding. Um, so there we have it. I think we're going to do passion flower next month, but I can't decide between Yarrow, or I mean Hawthorn berries, which aren't te technically a flower, but they come from the flower, or passion flower. So I was going to talk to Denise after this, and then I'm going to go to the shop and see what we have the freshest, nicest inventory of and read your newsletter. So it'll either be Hawthorne or Passion Flower. So we'll keep you guessing for the year or of flowers for the last month, 12 or 12 December. And you'll have to just wait and see and read your newsletter to find out which one we chose. But it'll be either of those two. And again, our Yarrow, our liniment from 7th Street Gifts in the Lawrenceburg Public Library. Appreciate you and uh, stay well and see you next time.